term uh, uh, contract, it's a short term contract, it's about one year and uh, that's why you know it cannot create some long term threats. Uh, again, uh, the uh, consumption, uh, the um, uh, need, need for the uh, additional uh, supplies uh, we had all, um, all, uh, during the last two years and uh, we used all possible options for getting uh, supplies uh, for covering this um, uh, demand and uh, this is the continuation of the process, nothing new again. So with Azerbaijan, you mentioned differences in the messaging of Azerbaijan and uh, Georgian side. We have uh, discussed everything with Azerbaijan side and there is full understanding on both sides what is happening and what we are going to do in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Minister. Uh, once again, there is a clear uh, need for greater transparency and uh, for my time in the United States and the Georgian Embassy, I became a big admirer of uh, U.S. Uh, political system because it's uh, extremely transparent. And especially the first thing which came to my mind is the congressional hearings where congressmen invite their public officials and the CSO representatives to talk about issues they are interested in, issues they concern. I think in this particular situation it will be very important if such hearing takes place in the Parliament of Georgia where civil society groups together with the relevant uh, government officials of Georgia sit together and talk openly on all the questions they have regarding this deal which is in the pipe, whether these are concerning or not. Uh, do we have any concluding remarks for one minute since we already are out of time? Briefly, one minute concluding remarks from all of you. Just a few words. First of all, I would like uh, to mention that uh, more stronger Europe and uh, direction um, uh, heading towards uh, the uh, strengthening uh, the ability of Europe uh, towards uh, tackling uh, the security threats of the region is only strengthening NATO and other uh, security organizations and uh, we um, are very much motivated and uh, committed uh, to participate in all um, relevant mechanisms and frameworks which are uh, oriented uh, towards ensuring security um, in Europe and in the Euro-Atlantic area. I think that uh, strength of Europe stays in uh, uh, ensuring freedom, democratic development of all the states, uh, of the nations, uh, supporting this path uh, and uh, it will ensure that uh, Europe will be free and uh, in peace in the coming years. Challenges will exist always, but we should be committed and firm uh, in supporting freedom of the uh, individual which will uh, finally uh, ensure freedom of the country and ensure peace uh, in the countries and in the region. So I think this is the principle we should follow and uh, we should not be afraid of the challenges uh, uh, on this path. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, let me thank you all for uh, active participation. I think that is what, what uh, makes uh, what the state functional with the full participation of the uh, civil society in the processes that the uh, country undergoes, that uh, the reforms that the uh, government uh, is implementing. And I uh, just want to reiterate the determination of our government to the implementation of the uh, of the reforms uh, associated with the European and Euro Atlantic integration to bring uh, benefit by prosperity with the democracy and with the increased security for our country and um, in that sense I think that uh, the uh, tangible results coming from the European Union is complementary to the uh, policy and process uh, that uh, countries like Georgia, like Ukraine and Moldova undergo. So once
once again, thank you for the organizers for uh, this interesting uh, debate and I wish you a successful uh, two days uh, for Thank you, David Ambassador. Thank you. Well, I fully subscribe to what both ministers have said and I'm very much looking forward to working, to continue to work very closely with Georgia in, when it comes to, it, to, to Georgia's Euro-Atlantic aspirations. I think we are all together on the same and on the right path and uh, I'm really looking forward to that. It's not just the governments, it's also civil societies working together. It's the grassroots level where people actually want to make a difference, want to see a difference, where they approach each other, where they approach us. It's about building networks, about communication, about everything that we have seen what happened here today and we think this is just the kind of example that we should continue to pursue. Thank you. Mr. Emerson. Thank you. Well, your initial question was about Europe whole and free. Um, my observation of that is now, at the beginning of 2016, we observe that the cleavage between two Europes is, in fact, deeper. Uh, that is to say, the cleavage between the European Union and its associates, including the three uh, association agreement countries, of course, including Georgia and the Russian-led uh, customs union. Uh, so why now? It is because at the beginning of this year, as I've already remarked, uh, Ukraine has gone ahead with the DCFTA and Russia's attempt to derail that uh, uh, has failed. So the question is what next? Uh, the question indeed what next is whether uh, the Minsk process between and, and the Normandy group uh, uh, succeed in reversing this tendency towards a deepening cleavage uh, in Europe. That's the open question. We'll discuss it again in a year's time to see what happened. Thank you. First of all, let me reiterate my thanks to organizers of today's conference and to the panelists and participants of the conference. One uh, big point, uh, I would agree with my friend Misha on the you know, role of the parliament, and I agree with the position that whatever happens, if it is directly or indirectly linked to the security or foreign policy, the role of the parliament should be uh, more active. And uh, also, let me use this excellent opportunity and say that we have different, we have had some comments on Germany, and uh, we may have different positions on the dynamic of Georgia's integration, on the position on the, around the region, which is related to other countries as well, but one is clear, and we should underline that the Georgia, the Germany, sorry, since independence of Georgia, still stands along uh, with Georgia, and strongly support Georgia's territorial integrity, so and would like to use this opportunity and thank Germany for it. Uh, and uh, in addition to it, uh, I do believe that the time will come uh, when the maybe Chancellor from Berlin and uh, Ambassador from Tbilisi will tell us will come. Thank you. Thank you, Levan, and uh, we will never uh, forget uh, German support to the decision and to the commitment of the alliance that Georgia will become a NATO member in 2008, which. Uh, is the fundamental commitment from the alliance that drives the process of Georgia's NATO membership and uh, also following decisions where we have package NATO Georgia, Joint Training and Evaluation Center and uh, let's not forget that the core team is led by German officers that will help us to steer this process of uh, Georgia's NATO membership process. So please help me to thank our dear panelists for, uh, for their very interesting comments and suggestions and uh, thank the audience for the questions.